By watching this video, you can increase your skill set, your salary, and even your ceiling for growth at your current job. Now let's get to the video. Hey YouTube, it's the Test Lead. And today we're talking about becoming a full stack, or in my eyes, a complete software tester. Before you click off, yes, this is for both manual or human testers as well as automation testers. If by some chance you learned something today, I ask that you leave a like and subscribe. Now, let's start the video. In today's world, technology is ever evolving at a very fast pace. Testing the software or website for different companies gets more and more complex. Traditionally, whether you do manual human testing or automation testing, you're good with just doing front end testing. But that's just one side of testing. I want you to be a complete tester. So what's the other side? Before we get to the other side, let's start with front end testing, which is the most common form of testing. There's a good chance if you're in a QA software testing field right now, you're a front end tester. Front end testers test the GUI or graphical user interface of a website or software from the customer's perspective. So what does that mean? If I go to Apple's website, I type in apple.com. What do I see? I see Apple's GUI or user interface on their website. It probably shows iPhones or MacBooks or whatever the latest product is. I'm visually seeing what a customer will see. That's the front end. That's the front of the software or application that a customer sees. So that's the normal type of testing that everybody's familiar with. So what's the other side? Backend testing. If front end testing is testing what the customer sees, backend testing is testing what happens behind the scenes. Only background functionality and code that makes the front end actually work. So remember, I want you to be a complete or full stack software tester. So I want you to learn how to test both the front end and back end. That help you raise your skill set, become a more valuable resource, and most importantly, probably can raise your salary that way. The more testing, the more reliable the software is, because of your testing, the better quality that software is. The better quality it is, the higher the price they can charge for that software. So if a customer pays for it and they're paying that premium because you tested it for its high quality, they're gonna pay that premium to your company. Your company gets that money and they're like, wow, Justin, your amazing testing got our company a lot of money. Here's a bonus, here's a raise. So now because you're a complete tester, you're making more money. So now let's dive deeper into how you can test both the front end and back end. We'll start first with the front end because that's the most common type. You probably already know how to test it. If you're a manual or human tester, testing the front end is pretty simple. You're gonna physically go to websites, type in a website, do different activities, from a customer's perspective on a website and see if I expect once I add this item to my cart, it should appear there, does it appear there? Yes or no? If I put a valid username and a valid password into this login screen and press enter, does that work? Yes or no? I'm visually seeing what the customer will see. That's simple front end testing. If you're an automation person, you use tools for that. You use tools like Selenium, 
if it's a mobile device, Appium, and they both do front end testing. So like I said, the front end testing, that's the most common one. Usually that's enough to get by. But to take that next step, let's dive deeper into how to do backend testing. Backend testing involves testing the underlying logic. So that's what the code does and how it does it. And by doing so, you're making sure that the code and logic is actually working as expected. So first we have databases. Normally, when there's any interaction with a customer and they do a transaction, that information gets stored in a database. Think of a database as a central location for storing information. That information is then compartmentalized or put in containers called tables. Databases can be a whole nother video, but for right now, that's all you need to know. Any transaction that happens on a website gets stored in a information pool called a database. That database is broken up into compartments called tables. So that's the first way you can test some of the background processes. That if I do a action on the front end, such as adding a new user, you have to make sure that that user gets added to the database. To do so, you need to learn something like SQL. SQL is a way for you to interact with databases. You write SQL commands to create, edit, add, or retrieve information from a database. So that's the first option, using databases and SQL. And yes, manual testers can also do this. I haven't introduced this in my course, SQL and databases. The next method for backend testing that you can do as both a manual tester or human tester, as well as a automation tester is by testing APIs. API stands for Application Programming Interface. And it's simply a way for two different applications or pieces of software to communicate. For right now, that's all you need to know. I'll create a separate video diving deeper into APIs, but not to confuse you or drag this video out, think of APIs as a way for different programs to interact or talk. And you can test this because developers write code to create these APIs. But you can validate and test this by using tools such as Postman, which I also teach my manual QA course and my automation course whenever that comes out. By using Postman, you can test different APIs for different applications and make sure that if I call this API, am I getting back the proper status codes, the proper response bodies, and any other information that's only required for APIs. Right now, it sounds like a lot, but once you watch my future videos, breaking down databases, tables, APIs, it all makes sense. And remember, by learning these new skill sets and other ways of testing, you're becoming a complete tester, you're becoming more well-rounded, you'll understand the software and applications on a completely different level. And the best part for most of you guys, you can then demand more money from your current job or at the very minimum, put it on your resume and use that to find a new job. So right now, if you're just starting out with backend testing, remember, I want you to start with SQL and databases and then go to APIs by using tools such as Postman, which is free to use. So I don't want any excuses for not knowing how to use it. And I have videos, I have a whole playlist diving deep into how to use Postman. So once again, don't make any excuses. 
So remember, your goal with being part of this channel and community is to be a well-round full tester. So I'm gonna start making more videos to teach you how to be a full tester. Everybody focuses on just the front end testing with UI, GUI testing, exploratory testing, using Selenium, and all that is cool. But if you wanna be a full, well-rounded, more marketable tester, dive into some backend testing. See how stuff works behind the scenes. Learn about SQL, learn about databases, learn about APIs, learn about Postman. It sounds complicated, but you're gonna invest in your future. So make the most out of it. If you need help on your QA journey, check out my book, QA Must Know Vocabulary, as well as my course, the Manual QA Academy. There should also be a Automation Academy coming very soon, so make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, subscribe, retweet it, whatever people do nowadays, create a TikTok for it, I love it. But most importantly, don't forget this, learn something new today.